It looks like we have uh, the Road Trolls. Hammer, I think. Yeah, the Trolls Roar Hammer, or just just Trolls Hammer, maybe. Yeah, just I Trolls think the Hammer. Trolls Hammer. And, and what's the other thing? The yeah. Great EP, I think. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know what? Yesterday I was working a lot. I was a little, I was a little EP myself, mm. if I may say so. Uh, it was definitely a long day getting everything prepped, but this is gonna be very very fun very very fun starting class already just uh looking at this i really wonder what the other stat lines are going to be um for all the other classes here and what the board's going to offer uh we should be ready here in just a moment <sighs> i don't know this is going to be this is going to be interesting um really really wonder what the teams are going to decide on this time because they, they do change their strategies from time to time too which i think is really interesting yeah, it's going to be an interesting dynamic. Like, I was watching some of the practice, like I said, and I think NPC, who just played, um, one advice that he was giving to people is if you realize you are, like, uh, on the same path that Kata is on, leave. Like, pivot. Mm. Like, do that immediately because he's going to be more efficient with, like, taking those lines. And I wonder if that's the sort of respect that these uh, runners will put on him as well. Or if they're maybe going to try to contest him. I mean, this could still end up working out for them. It's just that sort of advice that I heard because he is just, like, um, so good at, like, he has that speed running background where he optimizes the smallest line. And uh, that's probably his strength. Yeah, here we go. There is the board now is on... Borealis in the middle, Millennia as oh, well. Millennia. Oh, that's Mo. what I like to see. That's what I like to see. So we and have we a lot Gold going on here. We got root level 60. This is like the bot I wanted to see. Like I already see like four god bosses. There's a lot of late game here. There's a there's a Mo lot on this board. Wait, a lot of Fiat killing. Moog. Yeah, this is uh, kind of wild. Full Halic Tree Medallion as well. So we're going to see a Commander Nile this time around as well. Uh, there's a lot of killing, which means get a weapon online. This is this this board is just screaming at me. Get a weapon online as fast as you can. Just start getting ready. This is this is early game rush into late game prep. There is no mid game. This is all just yeah. early game. Okay, Godric with uh, Nefeli Lu into duping. All right, that's good. I got that Shabiri grapes. Let's go. Let's get the everything else into the late game right away. I think like what I immediately see. Th this is my guess, just from having seen them practice that. Uh, Kata and Pub will immediately eye this somber stone bell bearing square. It's not necessarily a super fast square because there is some like somewhat difficult bosses to take down, uh, especially the Falling Star Beast. But I know that that's something they usually default to, and it would be a square. It doesn't necessarily have too much like uh, like too many scary lines. I mean, I guess row uh, four looks okay. You do need capital access though, so there's like one problem there. And then column three has that fierce champ square, which is not necessarily amazing. But it's one of those squares where if you do it, you also at least get some sort of setup at the same time. It's not as good probably as getting a plus 12 uh, smithing because you can obviously buy the four somber stones at EG, but um, right. it's something. Uh, no, I definitely agree. And yeah, that's maybe one of the earlier squares I think they would go for because it's pretty easy to complete. Uh, you have Falling Star Beast into double crucible or double crystallion, sorry. Um, but I'm honestly expecting, I'm definitely expecting a Godric race here, uh, with Nefeli Lu. And then after that, yeah, it yeah. might be kind of a toss up as to what you go for. Uh, there is the Duper Remembrance and Sleeping Golem combo here, by the way. The Sleeping Golem in the row two, column two. Duper Remembrance right. is like really Sleeping. next to that. So I could see True. that really working in. If you're going to get Godric, okay, now I'm going to go for Duper Remembrance. I'm going to go for Sleeping Golem right after that. That might be a nice one, two, three hit, hit piece combo that, uh, one of the teams could go for. Um, but if the other team kind of has a little bit of a hindsight on that and is like, okay, hold on. If we lose Godric, go straight for sleep, Sleeping Golem. Let them get dupe, but we don't let them get all three because that is a very, very nice uh, combo to kind of pull off there. This is a super, a super interesting ball to approach because there is some rush squares. Like you said, there's Godric, Great Rune, Godric, Nefeli combo. There's the Sleeping Golem. There's some relatively easy um, rushable squares that don't require too much setup, but... If you don't take all of those squares and suddenly you're in a position where everything that's left open is like Moog, Melania, Nial, Fias Champs, Sua Moog, Capital, like, and you don't actually are really set up to do that, suddenly uh, it could be really bad for you. Yep. No, I definitely agree. It looks like that uh, Pup here is still looking at possible character creation. Maybe she's a little bit behind. Let me just double check here real quick. Uh, make sure that she is actually on the same pace as everybody else. It looks uh, so good on my end. Yeah, yeah, it looks like she is. I was just a little bit delayed on my end. I'm just refreshing everyone real quick, just make sure they were up to speed on everyone's screen. Okay, everyone is on the same side now. I was a little worried there for a second. She did not see the clock, uh, but everyone running across the bridge now. I think everyone going to the same class again. 
besides uh no, well, actually, actually no, we, yeah. have, we have eggy eggy and pup are doing the same and cutter and cbd are doing the same so we have double claws actually on yeah. uh, cutters and and maybe that's actually kind of hinting towards a potential godric race sort of stuff because that does that can definitely put in some work um these early hook claws and then eggy and pup are both on the same class as well yeah, I wonder what they saw that they wanted to pick different classes here. Maybe the stat line, maybe just because, you know, if you have the uh, claws here that the Godric is faster, as you just mentioned, and maybe that the Aggie and Puppery going for the different class, maybe for the stat line, maybe because they just prefer Lord Sword, Straight Sword, or is right. that Lord Sword and Great Sword, actually, I believe. Um, it is the great sort of the stamp, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, one thing that I'm actually not exactly sure about, but you as the host might be able to answer this for me. If you don't get hit while summoning Nefeli Lu, would that still count as hitless? Like, it doesn't matter if she gets hit, right? Correct. That killer. would still be hitless. Right. Yeah. So that's actually quite an intense combo there. Hitless bo Remembrance boss, Godric while summoning Nefeli Lu, and restore Godric's Great Rune. That's probably an angle that both teams will be looking at. Yeah, no, I, like I said, yeah, that's definitely going to be a rushable thing, 110%. Um, the question is, what do they do after that as well? But also, are you going to try and commit two players onto that square? Are you going to have someone maybe go ahead and rush uh, the Sleeping Golem right away from the very beginning while your teammate goes for Godric? Like, what, what exactly uh, is your other half doing while you're going to be doing Godric? Because both teams are obviously going to go for Godric, I think, in this case. But uh, yeah. what is your teammate going to do? I think that's going to kind of also set the tone for the rest of the game. Because if you have, let's say, uh, you know, Aggie go for, or in this case, CBD actually go for Godric, and then Aggie going for uh, maybe Lightning Ash Ram of, uh, Ram of War. Right. So, you know what I mean? Did I just say it wrong again? Lightning Ram. I, I, think, every, I think everyone got what you were saying. Yeah. At least I did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic. Um, yeah. Looking at the the mark, um, just like what these players have like respectively marked, it's uh, it's going to be interesting because we definitely have a lot of overlap, like you said. Both teams definitely angling uh, Godric and the Sleeping Golem. I think those are kind of like the diverging paths. Like if you're going for Godric, you're probably not going to go for the Sleeping Golem unless, and maybe this is going to be what we talked about earlier. You could potentially be really greedy and be like, oh, maybe I can kill Godric and then also dupe his remembrance on my way to the Golem. But I don't think they're going to make that. They're going to let that happen. Like, I think one part of the team will try to secure that, uh, that sleeping golem kill. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really, really curious here. We're going we're to see the decision-making real quick in just a moment. And there it is. Immediate pivot to sleeping golem. This is exactly what I was expecting. Both of them going exactly... Okay, so Puppery and Aggie going for that sleeping golem right, right away. Uh, that, that's... They both know that bridge jump. This is actually going to be really close, and every single move will matter. There's this double jump you can do here onto the side of the bridge where you will barely survive. Pup is doing it well, and Eggy follows. This is actually a very, very head to head race. And that's probably the reason that might have just been the reason for them picking the great. So just to get that extra, like, stance damage to actually to stagger that, uh, that golem and get that kill quickly. Yeah, this is definitely already a huge race from both teams, and I do wonder. This might just come down to, uh... oh, no, it comes down to that. That's already enough time for Puppery to possibly get the golem way before Aggie does, sl uh, sliding off the rock here. That is not good. That is not good for uh, Team Monkey Ballers here. Losing a little bit of time, not getting that Spirit Spring jump will possibly cost him this square. No, the opposite side of the, uh, the screen, essentially, or the team. We have uh, the other two runners actually head into the market fight right now. They both got their claws online. And they're going to be trying to... It's going to it's gonna be an interesting dynamic in this sort of race because maybe one of them gets hit in Godric but ends up killing him quicker. And then maybe one... Like I, The worst case for either team is if one player gets everything. Uh, yep. Nefeli, Hitless, and the Great Rune, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And uh, this is going to be... A bit of an execution uh, display here like, from, from uh, both uh, teams here to see, okay, who's got the faster market fight from CBD and uh, Catalyst. Is CBD getting here a nice bleed proc on his market. Both of them kind of at the same health bar right now. Um, I'm surprised that the people, when they do get Raptor Talons or they do get any other like fist weapon like this, they aren't using the quick, quick step as much as they uh, yeah, should, yeah. I feel like. Because if you quick step into an R1, you can easily tag more often than uh, if you just keep rolling. 
It's right. quite stunning to see how far Pub is ahead on the square, simply just off of that jump. It's a double jump that I feel like most people have put into their repertoire, like that double jump off the Spirit Spring there. Yeah. Pub making it like work first try. It, it's such a huge difference. Like, this is looking like a 20 second plus advantage she has on that square right now. Oh, Pub dies though! That's she gets actually gonna be really close now. Uh, Aggie just spawned in. I don't know if she... Uh, it doesn't matter if you grab the Gracie, right? You automatically respawn because of the, the trapped feature. Right, right. I believe so, yeah. I but it uh, looks like that yeah. goal, sleeping goal, Aggie's taking out now. his mortal and pestle and turning Pup into dust. This might be Damn. what Aggie needs to get back into uh, this race here for the square. Okay, gets the first stagger. I believe he's probably gonna... Need at least like four or something along those lines. Yeah, looking a lot between like four and five with this weapon. Yeah, this is looking really close. This is going to be very, very interesting, this uh, this fight already. And it looks like that Kata is already on his way over to Godric, while CBD is still opening the gates. Yeah, definitely faster market kill there coming out from Kata. Oh, boy. And that's exactly the sort of thing Ooh. we've talked about. Oh, wait, Aggie dies as well. Right at the end, they're getting stepped on. And now Pup is in the lead once again. This is one of the most interesting sleeping golem races I've ever seen. Not much EP to be had, yet this golem is out for blood. Oh, no, and now Pup oh, dies no. again. This golem is vicious today. I'm pretty sure both of these players have to be thinking at this point that the opposite team is doing something else. This is a similar scenario to what we've had last time around where they basically both kept on dying to Omen Killer and no one really had some informa information about what's going on. And that's actually going to be interesting. Like, even if Eggy gets the square, he probably won't know what Pup is working on. He is in the advantage right now, but I mean, this golem is out for blood. We'll see who will actually get the square eventually. That being said, we did talk about briefly earlier, Kata on these sort of races, we do give him a little bit of an edge, and he's definitely showing up right now. He's already at the grace before the boss fight here. Yeah, Aggie currently one repost ahead on Pup on the sleeping golem here. If he just keeps up this poise break on that one ankle, he should be good to go. Gets another uh, stagger here. Going to go for another repost. That chest just sticking out just enough for that repost animation. If he keeps... Oh, that's a little early. Oh, I should be fine. If he fine. needs two more, probably nice. Nice okay. chain. Doesn't even give him a chance to react. Oh, oh no! Wait. The he chest can't get the space of the... Oh, God. This is actually not very good at all for... Aggie, this means that Pup might be able to catch up here now with the next stagger. He needs to make sure that he gets the stagger here uh, so he keeps his lead as Pup is going to have her sleeping golem turn into a car for just a moment and vroom across the arena. She does get a stagger here, though. Aggie dies again, though. He Oh, no. He got knocked up there um, trying to dodge the step, and Pup is now in the lead once again. <laughs> it has to be this the craziest crazy. sleeping golem race of all time. This is ridiculous. There is another stagger here from Pop. She is confused. Am I on the right side? Am I on the wrong side? She misses the repost. She couldn't tell if she was on the right side or the wrong side of the golem. Oh, she's got to be careful here now. She might die. Again, grabbing out his mortal and pestle, slamming the ground. Does not like the bug. And she dies. Oh, my no God. Way. There's absolutely no way. There's absolutely no way this is happening. Also, on the other side of the screen, just to mention this real quick, either Nefeli's AFK as usual, or did they both decide against summoning her? I'm not too sure, as their camera is kind of uh, covering up the NPC helper, I don't think they actually summoned her. Yeah, I think they both went for the read into thinking, maybe I can get the square by not summoning Nefeli because they prioritized it over it, which is going to leave that open for the other part of the team to eventually grab later. Very interesting. Oh, no. Aggie now on the chopping block here for the sleeping golem. Has got to make sure that he gets good RNG. There it is. That's a better RNG move. They can go and roll through and get that ankle shot that he really needs for another stagger. Hits the kneecap, though, sadly. So that's not going to be a poise break. Okay. There's a jumping R2. Very nice. Okay. And that's another repost here for Aggie. Now Pup, again, back on the sleeping golem herself. Aggie gets the repost last minute there. He's currently about half health on this golem. Pup here should be on her second post as well. This is getting really, really close. Kata here going to be marking a square here very, very soon for his team. First square on the board for Team Kateri. There it is. Remembrance boss hitless without summoning Nefeli Lu. This would be for CBD now quitting out. Maybe summoning Nefeli Lu would be yeah. a good, a good yeah. uh, move. I feel like that's what you want to do here. I don't know if he's going to be able to catch it in time because otherwise, I mean, he, I guess he's getting the great rune. Um... Well, he probably will lose the Great Rune. Okay, Kata not immediately going for the Great Rune Restoration. Maybe thinks, 
Oh, this is actually interesting because maybe now he thinks that CBD didn't go for it. Nah, or sure, he's but he's going for the dupe here, actually. Enough. He's going for the dupe, for the dupe skip instead. Down. That makes sense, the solo one, yeah. Yep. He's going to go for the nice little wall skip here that people have been uh, working on the last week. Very nice wall skip here from Kata. Gets the nice hops. Um, there it is. I'm pretty sure Eggy just died to sleeping golem. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is uh, like... I, 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 God. You know what, you know what's funny? When I first wrote this square, it was like, hey, make weeping a bit more fun. L have, have some right, more squares right. and weeping. It's sleeping golem. It's not that bad, right? And here we He's see. He's sleeping, right? Surely. Yeah, it's your sleepy, eepy golem. And here we see, oh my God, Pump Wait, getting Pump swiped. Just died to sleeping golem. I can't believe it. This golem is on an absolute killing spree. 10 to 0 right now. <laughs> bad puppy away like a fly in the room. Does not want her around right now. Aggie now back, slapping at ankles. Okay, interesting. So Kata is more interested in setting up some sort of line threads because CBD is most likely going to be able to get that restoration square going here. I, I think I think that's interesting that he does actually decide to go for this. Maybe he's kind of reading into Kata's decision making here because obviously technically there shouldn't have been much of a chance for him to get the square if Kata chose this. A little bit of a gamble, but it might actually end up paying off for him. Yeah, this is very nice bluff call here from CBD, thinking like, okay, he's not going to go for Restore a Great Rune, he's going to go for Dupe. I think this is a really good play from CBD, because he's like, yes, yeah, duping yeah. is faster than Restoration, I'm going to go for the Restoration. Uh, so that way, at the very least, uh, we can still get a, a square on the board. Here's another square for Team Kateri now, 2-0 to zero currently, duping that Remembrance from Godric from, uh, from Kata. Very, very nice play. And he's going to move straight into going? checking weapons. Golem currently stuck in the door. Uh, on Eggy's side of the screen. Pop's still working on the next stagger. The HPs are actually very similar between the two. Oh, no. Pop is getting the next stagger, while Eggy's <laughs> still kind of stuck trying to build up more poise damage. And what if Pop ends up winning here even after the last death? I think she's exactly one repost away from actually beating the sleeping golem finally. Oh no, <laughs> this is so... This is oh, so there it goes, there it goes. All she needs to do right now is do the R1 here on the weak spot, and Pop will actually end up winning this. There game it is, for sleeping goal. minutes into the run, and Eggy just sees and sees... Probably thinks that this can't be real. Um, wow. Yep. 3 to 0 for Team Kateri early on. Obviously, quite interesting. Now, I will say, none of these players are really setting up too much. I mean, um, I guess Kata at least has some money. And he might. And this is what I thought. So he is going for the somber bell bearing square. I know this is something you very highly values. Because all of these early game squares are slowly but surely being basically marked away. And um, honestly, if I'm red team, that's exactly what I, what I want to keep doing here, which would force the opposite team into these late game squares, but they won't actually be able to, they won't actually be set up for it. Now, Carter's team doesn't necessarily know this. In fact, they essentially have basically zero info on what they're doing. They can only assume that they've been sniping them on stuff because they haven't marked anything. But I think it's a good idea. Eggy, oh no, it's, it's, it's one of those days again, choosing the same... Square as Cutter again after just being sniped on Sleeping Golem. Picks up the Rod Grease here. Both of them actually at the same time trying to go for Falling Star Beast. I will give the edge to Cutter here with the curved club. Yep. Strike damage is going to be way better on the Falling Star Beast rather than a Great Sword. Uh, and I think this is actually CBD giving away that, yeah, Kata, you beat me to Remembrance Hitless, but I restored the Great Rune. This is a little bit of information that Red Team's going to be getting now from that square completion. But at the very least, 3-1 to one now, uh, at le uh, Team Monkey Ball is on the board with that, uh, with that square. Uh, Aggie grabbing the Smithing Fives here, maybe going for the ladder skip. Going to be getting rid of the Pest Threads attack real quick so he doesn't get one shot. He's got to be careful. His Vigor level is really, really low here. Possibly yeah. quit out or something just to drop the aggro. Um, not going for Ladder Skip either, by the way. So this is going to be very, very interesting on who's going to get this Falling Star Beast first. Looks like that Kata currently is on the same route as well. Getting, getting absolutely drilled in the back. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I know Eggy values the square a lot as well. Oh my god, wait, okay, Eggy does not have the vigor to tank the blast right there. Um, <laughs> that's actually the remembrance money difference. Uh, wow, this uh, is not a very good start for Eggy. Definitely can't be feeling too good about that one. Uh, thankfully, he at least is getting some smithing stones on the way. And this is exactly what we talked about earlier. Despite everything, even if he ends up losing the square, I actually, I'm not sure if Cutter's game crash, if he's just getting the slowest load of all time after quitting out here. Could be... Okay, okay, just a very slow load. I think this tunnel in particular ends up yeah, loading quite yeah, long. Yeah, this, this tunnel takes a really, really long time for some reason. 
But uh, be, but yeah, oh, no, Sombra four pickup. I was expecting I was expecting him to pick up the Sombra four here on the wall before going into the Falling Star Beast fight, uh, and goes straight into the fight with Rot Grease on his curved club. And it looks like that uh, pup here is getting ready for Lightning Ram Ash of War. By the way, Room. yes, I said it right and this time. Sorry. Very, very, very nice. Also, this is basically <laughs> exactly what I um, what I wanted to see from them here. Eggy is getting blasted here by the pest threads quitting out and isn't actually able to do it uh, in time, getting another blast through his body. This Vigor is definitely not made for Kalid. I don't even know what even is this Vigor. It looks like five. This is one of the smallest HP bars I've ever seen. Yeah, sadly, Team Monkey Baller is actually dropping the ball in this case on this match. Not looking very good for them. Three to one. Still for Kateri, possibly turning into a four for one after Kata is going to be getting this uh, Smithing Stone Sombra Bell Bearing Square. Yeah, it's very important to clutch out this first try fight because a lot of runners pick up the Rod Grease in this tunnel, which definitely helps tremendously. That obviously does mean if you do end up dying, um, you don't have that available anymore and suddenly your chances of taking down the boss decrease a little bit. It's quite yep. a tanky boss, mainly because of the high resistances, but Kata, with that strike damage like you mentioned, is actually putting in some work. Yeah, and that Rod Grease, uh, uh, obviously putting in the work it needs as well, taking slowly away on that Falling Star Beast. That Rod Grease tech has been helping so much on early Falling Star Beasts. Uh, however, I would like to see, honestly, a bit more Falling Star Beasts from Altus. I really wonder what the health difference is between the Falling Star Beast in Altus and this one, because uh, getting the one in Altus is actually, I would say, preferred when it comes to upgrades as you get Smithing Stone 6s rather than Smithing Stone 7s. So you could actually go for a plus 18 weapon rather than plus 16, and uh, that would just give you a bit of a stronger weapon uh, in, yeah. for the long run. I, I think the main advantage of this one, other than the fact that we obviously have the bell bearing, the Somber Stone bell bearing on this board, is that this tunnel also has three Smithing 5s. A lot of True. runners seem to really like that, so you can like pick them up on the way, set True. up your Smithing weapon even better, and potentially work on other goals. Yep, and he sees now that... Well, actually, he doesn't see anything because uh, this is only the first part of the square. Kata will immediately move over to the second bell bearing. Uh, once Eggy sees that, he will probably pivot here because I don't think there's any falling stuff he's in the no, Otherwise, Kata would have marked it. This is just for the double bell bearing here. And here we go. Counting some killing sheep as Pup is rolling towards them with the lightning ash... Fuck. I'm sorry. Uh, lightning ram ash of war... <laughs> It's, it's uh, actually difficult. I didn't really realize yeah, it. Dude, it's, no, but it's not easy. It's so it's stressful, kind of man. Uh, I think this is our fourth one now. I'm kind of losing count myself. Uh, <laughs> it went to like, the Limgrave Crucible night area. Right? I'm yeah, flustered now. I'm one. flustered. Ah, oh, man. But uh, oh, you're doing great. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. You're doing fantastic, man. And it, we have Kata here, though, going to be going for that second uh, bell bearing. By the way, going straight for the double crystallian fight. Going to be grabbing possibly the somber five that's in here, if not smithing stone fives that are in here as well. Uh, Ooh. sadly, Aggie setting himself up here though. To there's actually get snipes. secret tech. There's actually secret tech, and I don't know if Kata is, is like um, knows about this, but this tunnel has crystal darts on the way to the boss, and there's the triple watchdog square on the board. I wonder if he's. I feel like if anyone knows it's Kata, and he might actually go to the right and pick up those because that's obviously a super powerful weapon to take down those watchdogs. They will literally be fighting each other. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Go to the right. Okay, nice he, he either again. doesn't want to go for them or he doesn't know about them. Yeah, I don't think people know about it too much, uh, to be fair. The Crystal Darts is definitely a bit of a, a niche pickup. Or maybe they just haven't seen the Watchdogs yet because the early game was so right, prominent. Right. With, uh, by the way, Pup uh, marking that uh, four, uh, fourth square for her team, the Ash of War Lightning Ram 10 kill Sheep Square. So currently 4-1 yes. to one now for Kateri. And now I, I believe for Pup, it's time to just upgrade. It's time to just get something online, get your levels, get your weapon, uh, because the rest of this oh. board is just kill, 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 kill. I didn't see them pick up great stars. It's obviously a very powerful pickup. Now, one thing that has been that I've seen a little bit um, from MPT as well is that right now, where um, Pop is, there's actually a discar up, and the Ash of Wars are not randomized, and you can pick up wild strikes here, which is kind of crazy with that weapon. Yeah, uh, that's definitely a super solid weapon for a lot of the the bosses on the body, especially like Borealis. Um, is actually getting blasted by that strike damage, wild strikes, and I think she might be going for it. She's kind of heading towards that scar. She might actually, she might be ignoring that and instead 
try to pick up that Nefeli square right now. That's kind of left open. One of these other early game squares that it could be taken away from the enemy team. That is very true. Yeah, they might just uh, go for a little bit of double dipping here on Godric, which I think might be a great play as they're possibly expecting that, you know, Team Monkey Boss is not going to go for it. Uh, one more Crystallian left here for Kata as he's about to get to mark another square for his team. Aggie here on his way, sadly, and it's going to be sniped once more as this square is going to be lit up in, like, what, 30 seconds? CBD yeah, now currently much. in Halley Tree, too, uh, getting ready to grab some money here. The Somber 10, I believe, that's on the bridge. Just trying to be careful here, not get hit by that golden land that's being thrown at him from afar and grabbing a bunch of money. Maybe getting a Somber weapon from Roundtable. I don't know if he's gotten one already. Oh. Honestly, I, 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 like him picking up the Somber 10 is making me think that they're trying to cook up something really creative here. Maybe they're thinking, okay, we are not going to be able to win off of those early squares. We're losing all of them. Let's, let's set up something really strong so CBD might be able to work on these super late game squares later, like Moog, Melania. There's a lot of them online. I don't know if they can block the bingo threats from Red Team. Maybe they can force a situation like that to happen because there might just not be enough early game squares on the board to win alone like off of just early game stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Yep, yeah. and CBD here grabbing all the money, grabbing Somber Stone 9 and 10, while Pup is fighting Margit here. That lightning uh, on the weapon is actually helping her a lot with this fight yeah, as yeah. well. Very, very nice damage. That one charged R2 should do it for the stagger. There it is. And now Pup moving into Stormvale Castle. Let me move over here to Team Blue, by the way. Going to bring them up on the, on the big screen. Give me just a moment here. And there we go. Uh, going to see what they're going to be up to next. What are they going to do to recover? Currently, it's 5-1 to one now already on the board. But as we said... Uh, in the very beginning of this match. This is a very early game to late game board. So now yeah. we're slowly moving it. We're 22 minutes into the match. We're moving into technically the mid game in quotations here. But there is no real mid game besides maybe like what Blue Loretta or something. But uh, beyond much. that, it's going to be a lot of late game stuff and, uh, uh, and getting ready for that. And in this case, CBD is ahead. And as we saw last week, by the way, um, when CBD committed to a, a Somber 9 weapon and everybody else, including Aggie, was still rocking that smithing weapon, he pulled ahead for his team. Just yeah. that damage difference made him pull ahead, grab all these other squares that they really, really needed to secure that victory. So I think this might be the, like a little bit of a deja vu for a Team Monkey Ballers where, where CBD really just leans into that Somber 10 and starts just taking kills back to back to back and starts marking squares for his team. Yeah, I think in Monkey Baller situation, what you kind of want to do is probably have CBD commit to these late game squares and have Aggie potentially block some of these remaining early game squares. Maybe try to take away the Dragonheart bosses, maybe try to take away uh, sorceries. Uh, Kata, I think, was already kind of making some map progress towards Leona and Misbegotten. I saw him in weeping there for a little bit, is now kind of pivoting towards potentially imbued keys. With him being here, like, might be picking up... Or maybe he's actually going for the Dragon Hearts. It kind of works well. Uh, we got uh, Smarag right here next to the Academy Key. And then you need the Academy Key for one of the imbued keys, etc. Yeah. Uh, there's there's, there's just so much on this board, for sure, uh, that people should be considering. Um, but I'm really wondering what CBD is going to consider once he has his weapon online. Which is interesting as well, because I saw him check the greatsword chest, and it was Flum Burge, which is definitely not a somber weapon. If he went to round table, I missed it. So I actually don't know. It's very rare that I feel like I've seen people even pick up the somber 10, which is making me think, like, maybe he's found a weapon that I missed that's really powerful, and he just wants to get really strong. Um, because, like, I rarely see people pick up the plus 10. Like, plus 9 is usually what I see. Yeah. But plus 10 is kind of rare. Okay, looks like he's slowly working back here now, possibly going for the Watchdog in Limgrave as one of his bosses. Maybe starting to work on that Watchdog uh, square for the diagonal, if not column four, and maybe just trying to bring his team a bit more presence on the board. I don't know. Looks like Yeah, it. that sounds about right. No, I saw Eggy heading underground yeah he might actually still be looking for that somber weapon maybe gaining intel for both eggy and himself i know maybe carly has a weapon online uh or like available for him doesn't seem to have one that he likes might be heading to the beach merchant now yeah. so yeah Council will probably also not super good for them but there's yeah. a secret tech that i have uh, been talking about a little bit it's not that secret um but one thing that i have liked to do in these specific scenarios is 
There is this great thrusting sword chest in South Limgrave, uh, pretty close to where you would be picking up the 12 sorceries. It's the, the, the great EP chest. Yes. And since the chances of like a vanilla weapon is pretty low, there's essentially like a 50% chance for it to be bloody hellas, which is definitely a really nice weapon. Um, it can sometimes be more valuable than trying your best to just run around and finding one weapon, probably one of your better chances. CBD is not happy, isn't finding what he's looking for. Maybe the Weeping Merchant might be his last resort, to be honest, for a weapon here. But it looks like he's just going to cash in all of his runes and go for a weapon that he has in his inventory right now. As uh, Pup is currently in that Godric fight here with Nefeli Lu summoned. And dealing a lot of damage here. Uh, should be able to claim a sixth square for Team Cattery. Yeah, he's going for the Rotten Staff, a weapon that we've definitely seen do some work before. A plus 10 Rotten Staff, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see him essentially try to do one of these really difficult late-game squares right away, use those runes, uh, playing towards rune level 60, maybe Melania, Moog, that sort of stuff. Uh, Eggy is now as Margit. He might be actually getting sniped again, like maybe they just decided that this is something they want to go for that nefeli square because i don't really see much else they can do at least i guess there's tree spirits there's a tree spirit that you can pick up in stormvale but i think he's about to see that they just picked up that nefeli square and then i don't know if he's gonna pivot or not yeah i'm not too sure and then, like here's the thing there is the sixth square by the way already from uh team cattery uh so i gonna see that they just went for the nelly nefeli loose square but i don't know here's the thing here's the thing that's a little tough right is it just unfortunate that he keeps getting sniped, or does he keep putting himself in the way of sniping? You know what I mean? If you already lose so yeah. much time on Sleeping Golem, if you already lose so much time on Bell Bearings, why go for the next best thing? Because you know the enemy team is going to go for the next best thing, and they're probably already working on the next best thing. So maybe reach a little bit farther and go for the second best thing. Take something that maybe takes a little bit longer because it's less likely to be sniped in that regard. You're kind of putting yourself in harm's way by constantly going for the next best thing when you know you're behind. Now you don't have a weapon online. Now you don't have levels. You don't have uh, anything to really kind of give you that extra speed or extra edge to uh, start sniping things away from them. You have to start working back from ground zero and get yourself a bit more, uh, you know, tools in your, in, your, in your tool belt here to really uh, get your momentum back. Quick question. Why is CBD here? Uh, he might be going for the uh, Millennia play, to be honest. Is he really? Okay, now I was going to say, like, I, I saw it maybe there not. for a second, because why else would he be going there? Like, maybe he picked up the other Newman's rune that I missed briefly. Um, Because, like, to me, this is the sort of stuff that he would be working on. Like, maybe he's going for Nial first right now, with him being here at Castle Soul once again. But there would be no other reason for him to have a plus 10 rotten stuff. He clearly has to be looking towards these super late game boss fights, which I honestly think is a bad idea right now you have that set up you can go for that later what you need to do now is take away these early game squares to actually use that advantage right if you just work on borealis melania right now like the, t the other team is probably not going to be working on that anyway what you want to do right now is take away the dragon hearts you want to take away imbued keys and then be in that situation where Kateri has to go for melania moog etc but they are not set up for it so i don't really understand why they would be going for these late game squares now I, I mean, I guess he might be trying to just block column three right now by yeah. potentially going for Borealis. That's kind of what he's writing. Yeah, let me let me go ahead and move over to Team Blue here real quick, guys, to so get ready for that as we uh, slide over to the other overlay here. Um, yeah, so this, uh, I think the Borealis fight is not a bad fight. It is center square. It blocks the diagonal. It blocks row three. It blocks yeah. column three. And he does have a strike weapon. It does. There is a lot. There's a lot of going on here for Borealis that I think it's not the worst play. CBD is equipped to do it, and um, he's going to be able to at least wow, get something wait, on the board. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of damage. And uh, I think this, at the very least, will start to build some momentum for Team Monkey Ballers. It is a bit of a high-risk, high-reward type of play, for sure. He's got to be really careful here. He might die from those screams. He's got to be really, really careful yeah. not to like be at the head of Borealis, more like at the back feet. Does get a stagger here, though. Very, very nice. Should hopefully get a rot uh, in just a, a moment here. A thousand damage. Okay, wow, that is bad. some serious damage here. Nice repost on top of that. This is going to be Jesus. a very, very quick fight here. Maybe charge shot two again on the headpiece. Going to have to I'll back off here for the screams. Probably. Yeah, but that rot is going to put in a lot of work. Don't move back in. He's going to. Yeah, there it is. There's a scream. CBD, back yeah. off, please. There it is. 
that rot ticking away, though, making it very easy. Aggie here currently on Tree Spirits. Not the worst. So, like, yeah, he may be lost in the filet loop, but he's going to be able to work towards Tree Spirits now, which I believe Team Cattery is not working out, uh, wor working towards at all. Pup here, it looks like she's working towards, actually, uh, 12 Sorceries, while yeah, yeah. Uh, Kata may be getting working online. There it is, Borealis to... already. Fantastic. Yeah, that's extremely fast. Um, Pup already went um, to Thobs after the Godray kills. I think all she has to do for the most part now is pick up that scroll, buy some sorceries from Salon, and then she should be set up for that. But that's exactly what I mean. Like, yes, Borealis is good, um, but their main concern will eventually be that the red team can threaten the win just based off of those early game squares. They're gonna, they're potentially gonna secure them all, and then they might need to get like one annoying late game square, like gold free or sewer moog or something like that if uh, monkey ballers work on denying those squares right now and basically forcing Kateri into those as well i think they might be better off of that but it looks like they're kind of splitting up the work um cbd oh wait maybe cbd is actually doing the dragon hearts now i didn't yep. even see that uh, that synergy at borealis and now he's going to blast with the other two dragons that does work out pretty well this is what i was talking about like literally not even five minutes ago this is the what they did last week. CBD getting online with that weapon that he really, really needs. Oh, he's getting a really unfortunate attack here. It might be a cliffside of Giel. Um, but this is what I'm talking about. Exactly what he needs, though, is just that one weapon. And he's going to start bulldozing through all these single uh, kill squares. Um, and even like the early game stuff. It's going to be way more, uh, more easy for him to catch up now because he's got that momentum. Yeah, yeah, he can definitely put in some work there. And I like the idea that Aggie is now working on, he's working on tree spirits here. This one in particular also combines, uh, works pretty well with the Physic Flask tiers. So if they do get some of these early game squares away from Kateri, then this huge investment from CBD might pay off big time. So nice little guild kill here from CBD coming out. That's the second Dragonheart boss. Going to be promoting row one at some point and also blocking that column too, by the way. This is going to be Aggie's second tree spirit now, which is going to be, where is that? Yeah, so that's also going to be blocking row four. So this is both of them really committing to uh, that column two block, but also really like just building presence on the board, which I think is a really, really good idea. Um, now, Kettery is definitely working on column five here. They don't know that yet, but uh, um, Pup is about to finish off her 12 sorceries. Uh, Kata is definitely working on god bosses. Yep. So if yep. one of them can end up getting that full Halic Tree medallion, that's only going to be a big threat. And that's exactly what they don't want to happen. They don't want them to get an early win just based off um, early game squares and like one bingo. The good thing is though, once CBD finishes up the Dragon Hearts here and potentially sees that column five threat, which if Kata, knowing Kata is probably going to hold the god bosses for a little bit to potentially go for like a sneak attack there on column five. Uh, I do think though CBD obviously has the advantage on stuff like Nia. Like he is literally blasting through the whole game right now with this plus 10 rotten stuff. Yeah, I don't like, think... Look at that. <laughs> like, I don't, I, I don't think CBD should be going for god bosses here. Halic Tree is going to be way faster for him. You just do Castle Soul Skip, do yeah, yeah. Uh, Nile with the, you know, plus 10 weapon. This is honestly, this is all, this is literally all of it. All of this is playing into CBD's favor right now because he is currently the strongest player amongst all four players. He has the strongest weapon. He's got the most levels. Uh, he can just take control of this whole game pretty much. And there it is. He's going to move straight into that uh, Castle Soul Skip into Halic Tree Medallion. Yeah, it's Nial time. Or not. Oh. Uh, looks like he might go for Loretta real quick, uh, potentially setting up his own threat. But I mean, row three. I mean, they don't know that Kata's working on God Bosses, obviously. Or at least they might not know it. Um, he doesn't. Really, he didn't really give much away. He, they know that he has Godric, and that's pretty much it. Yep. And... Uh... Okay, that was uh, Aggie's second tree spirit. Going to be going for the Altus tree spirit as his last one instead of going for the uh, Limgrave one, which I think is a good idea because you do need two Storm Sword keys. And also, you need to. Um, there's a lot of travel time involved. So I think this one is definitely a better pickup. Maybe a bit more health on this one, but still a decent pickup here. That's going to be a nice square uh, block here for row four. And. Uh, Okay, looks like that actually Kata died, by the way, on God's Gun Apostle. He's still on this fight here. Very low health. Doesn't have any healing anymore either. Trying to bait out that overhead attack. But sadly, it doesn't really seem to get it. Apostle is not here to play. Trying to defend uh, King of the Hill. 
Yeah, we see the damage difference coming in between the two great stars users there on Team Kettery and CBD with this plus 10 rotten stuff. I don't know if this is essentially what he is working on right now, or specifically what he's working on right now, but I almost, he just got the Loretta Grace, and I kind of like the idea that he's essentially setting up all of his re these responses, like he can basically react to whatever Kettery is doing, and then just race them to it, just because of how powerful he is. Obviously, there's a chance for them in their mind that Kata also has a powerful weapon online, but... I literally have almost never... Oh, he's actually going for Melania right now. Just setting up oh these boy. other responses later, getting that square away, maybe getting that rune level um, 60. Because there is a potential row 5 threat, uh, depending on how many runes Team Kettery is able to get. Let's see how this works out. We do know that Melania is rotable. Uh, colossal damage. weapons, though, not that great versus her, I'd say. Yeah. However, CBD has done a lot of hitless fights, so he should be pretty... Uh well-versed in this fight as well. Let's see how it goes. Uh, with the Colossal, yeah, it does decent raw damage, though. It is going to micro-stagger her in a lot of her attacks. Uh, if anything, this is just a patience patience game right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Compared to, like, Borealis or other bosses that you can just honestly just bulldoze right away and not even, like, really consider punishes. With this fight specifically, make sure to play uh, with patience. Yeah, I don't know how their communication is, but technically CBD is in this really good spot where he can just sit here and then, like... Um, actually, I wonder, uh, there is a potential player that I could see from Kata where he goes to like three god bosses and then tries to go for the full Halic Tree Medallion, knowing that he will probably win that god square if it comes down to it. Because if he does mark that god square, um, especially after having seen that CBD was able to take down Borealis, which might make him kind of, like maybe he thinks, okay, CBD is probably pretty strong. I should not show him that he can snipe this Nial away from me. Um, I wonder if that's ever a play. Like, just getting three god bosses and then trying to do something else to secure the, the column. I'm going to go ahead and move here over to the four-player screen, by the way, guys. So that bingo board is going to move away for just a moment. But that's just so we can get all four fights or all three fights on the big screen here. Uh, so just get ready for that. Things are shifting real quick. Uh, but just to get everything in full scope would be really, really nice. I, I wasn't able to see if, um, for me on the screen, is quite small. Is this uh, Cutter's third or fourth god boss? I guess he could just, like... I don't know if he's done Soldier of Godric, which would be his last one, because he's done Godric and Godskin Apostle. Yeah, this, this would be his third. third. Okay. So, yeah, I wonder if he's just going to secure the square um, by doing Soldier of Godric last, or actually do the Halic Tree Medallion. That would be actually kind of a huge play, leaving them in the dark, getting that square, and then just sneaking it real quick, fast Soldier of Godric kill, boom, bingo. Yeah, I'm not too sure. See, uh, oh, Aggie dying to the tree spirit, oh, though, in Altus now. Just CBD, today, though. Not phase his one day. done. And there is phase two now on uh, Millennia for CBD here. Uh, gonna this be... is usually where you rot prog, by the way, with these rot weapons. So a couple more hits should do it here. And then this fight might already look in his favor. Yep. Just has to maybe get that charge dart, too. Rot proc just not yet. Maybe backing off just the heal, making sure that he's topped off on that health bar. Uh, Puppery here now moving, I believe, to get ready for maybe making a quick little somber check. Actually, axe somber check. Oh, CBD does get tagged with a double swipe here on Millennia. It's got to be really, really careful. Surely she wrote eventually. At some point, perhaps, perchance. Any perchances? Nice little Any charge dart, too. Should get a stagger here soon. Oh, there's the rod. There's the rod. Rod is on now. That is definitely going to be very, very useful here. Yeah, honestly, you can... Yeah, one, one to three more of these attacks. A good waterfall dodge, and you should have this in the back. Eggy is once again fighting the tree spirit. I think it is his last. Yep, it is his last tree spirit. That's going to be blocking row four. There is the stagger here on Millennia, by the way. Nice repost wow. here from CBD. He should be getting the uh, Ionia flower attack now. Uh, gets waterfall first, actually. Okay, she is not happy. Very nice dodge, though. Flying across the room, going to try and tag him. However, nice dodges from CBD. Uh, should get the flower attack here soon, though. Yeah, if she, if, if, if he's able to get like a little bit more stance damage here. There it is. There it is. Okay. Jumps into here, maybe into her here with a jumper too, and maybe one more charge deck or something, and she might be staggered into a win. The rod is still ticking down. Looks like that Puppery is working towards Shibiri Grapes, by the way. Going to be fighting Edgar here. 
as an NPC invader. And there is Aggie's third tree spirit getting a square on the board for Team Monkey Ballers. Uh, blocking this is a row good four. comeback pace right now. I think the CBD, if he gets this kill, is probably going to be, if not already, uh, he mean, actually he might, he just has to be on rune level 60 from this kill. I think that alone is like essentially enough, this Go fight. And he's like one it away. Going to be swapping over to Team Blue here real quick, guys. Adjust your eyes. Adjust your eyes. Wow. There it is. There it is. Millennia kill here for CBD on the board now. Millennia possibly into level 60. This is going to be, to be now going to be 6 to 7 in squares very, very, very soon here. Huge play from CBD. 40 minutes into the fight, a Millennia fight. Uh, Millennia kill. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure Melania's is alone allowed to reach level 60. So he definitely just has to level up here. I think it's like 450,000 or something. Yeah, level 60 done. Still 250,000 runes left. He is set up to just basically kill everything that's left. Like, honestly, all they need to do right now is block these early game squares, and then he can just kind of just blast for the rest of the game. CBD getting a huge adrenaline rush here, trying to shake that off real quick, as he is going to be going for Soldier of Godric now, which I do believe is a bit of a misplay, as he should be going for Halley Tree, I feel like, in this case. Uh, but is going to be going for that instead. Uh, by the way, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, Melina does count as a god boss because Goddess of Rot is That's in her true. name. So he does actually have two god bosses already going into Soldier of Godric now. is going to be his third boss. So this might be something where he can catch up if he gets uh, the fights back to back. And Honestly, this would be kind of crazy because it looks like Kata is doing exactly what I said. He's leaving that god boss there on three. He's buying the bewitching branches and he's going to try to get the Hailing Tree Medallion now. I, I think that's the only reason he would pick up the bewitching branches, right? To fight Nial. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, this is. And then CBD might actually be able to take it away from him, which would be massive because he would then also have the advantage on Nial. This is, this is absurd. This is absurd. This game turned from holy guacamole 4 to 1 for. Uh, team Cattery to 7-6 to six now with Team Monkey Ball is possibly having uh, advantage now on the whole board. Oh, but Kata is pivoting away from it again. He did buy those, but he's now actually going for Soldier of Godric. He didn't feel comfortable, especially after that Melania kill, to just let that square sit there. He's going to try to finish it off, and I think he will, because I think CBD is only on two god bosses. Even though he has the advantage here on Soldier of Godric, he won't be able to kill another one by the time Kata finishes this most likely. And then it's going to be on the Yal race, which... Kata already has the bewitching branches. I mean, CBD is arguably he just one shot, like literally one tapped Rick. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure Kata will get this square, and then it's going to be down to an Yal race. Yep, uh, it'll definitely be a race that, and I believe that is a race that CBD is going to win, uh, just because of that somber ten weapon. CBD has millennia levels. CBD has a plus ten somber. Like I said, he is still the strongest player right now uh, across sure. all By both far. teams. So this is this is what I, like everything is playing back to. This is deja vu of last week, where CBD just gets prepped. Aggie does all the early game work, and next thing you know, CBD is just going to be bulldozing through everything while Aggie tries to get his own character back up to speed. Like this is this is I think what like teams should be fo uh, focusing on more is pivoting back and forth. Have someone be strong, have someone rush, then have the person that was rushing get strong, and then have the person that is strong now start bulldozing, make choices for the team. And CBD sees the square mark right now, has to immediately pivot back to Nial. I don't know why he's even heading in that, into that direction. Uh, he should probably be immediately teleporting away, and that's what he's doing. Still in aggro. Now, even though I completely agree with you, and CBD has the advantage on Nial, there's one thing that Kata's going for him, is, which is the bewitching branches. If anything ruins your life in the Nial fight, it's his summons. And Kata being able to turn them around and get rid of them at the same time is going to be some sort of advantage. I'm actually not exactly sure if he has the first type of the medallion picked up yet, because obviously Nial is not going to be enough. If he has that, that would be another advantage just of riding time. I'm not going to lie here. Even if CBD has or doesn't have Bewitching Branches, I'm going to tell you right now, okay, off the top of my head, a plus 10 uh, Rotten Staff uh, is possibly going to charge Dart 2 one-shot his summons. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to expect them to live very, very long. Like that is something that he should be able to deal with uh, just fine. Um, he is actually going so fast by the way that his camera went blurry. I can't believe the speed currently on CBD screen. He, he is he is zooming for real. Now, the one thing, again, I, I'm lacking that piece of information. It can be hard to keep track on all four screens at the sa screens at the same time. Kata is actually struggling a lot here with Castle Soul Skip. Uh, CBD is already about to enter the fight, so he definitely has the advantage on Nial. The question is, does Kata have the first half? I, I don't think he does, because he just teleported back to Roundtable Hold, and he would have been invaded by 
Ensha at one point, and I feel like I would have caught that, which does make me think CBD does have the, does have the advantage on this entire... Oh, he has Bewitching Branches anyway, as well. Yep, and there it is already activating one of the summons against Nile. Going to be able to activate the second one. This is going to be huge, huge damage for CBD. He's going to have a yeah, huge no, advantage no, here. Castle Soul Skip here coming from Kata. The health bar difference is insane. Crazy. Should Negi's working on Loretta right now, just taking some of these earlier game squares away. I think at the same time, Papa's currently picking up some runes here in Ordina. Um, they're both working on some of these earlier game squares. Uh, both the summon of Nial and CBD teaming up to absolutely destroy the commander here. Yeah, this is something that I enjoy seeing. This guy can be an absolute menace. If you're there not we go. Phase two now for Nile. This should be a very quick fight now uh, for CBD as he does have a lot of damage and already a half health now, if not a quarter health now. Loretta now on Aggie screen as well. This is a, a two-for-one deal for Team Monkey Ball. It's possibly going to be moving into a tied game of 8-8 eight, eight if they do get their own squares. And Pup kind of moving her cursor around on the map. I don't exactly know. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure Kata's currently like locked in working on this Nial square and is definitely struggling quite a bit with it in comparison to CBD at least, who's absolutely destroying this uh, this boss fight. Does take a pretty big hit here though. Definitely doesn't want to die at the very end here. Would be quite unfortunate. But I'm not exactly sure what Pup is working on. Kind of riding towards Redan at the moment. There is some underground stuff on the board. Iron Ball from Nial. And CBD is taking the first medallion half here. I believe Papa might advantage. be making her way towards uh, three watchdogs. So going for the double watchdog fight here. And Caleb might be one of her choices. Uh, there is also imbued sword keys. Uh, she might be doing a little bit of a, a, of a, of a pickup game here. Trying to get some of the uh, leftovers uh, of the more easier squares on the board. While Kat is going to be going oh, yeah, for going this way. That's true. Some, of the, some of the tougher uh, options as in oh, Nile, or Sorry, Nile. Uh, people are going to lose their damn minds now. Um... But sadly, this is not going to be a bingo now for uh, Kata, most likely, uh, or K Kateri, because CBD is already on his way to Albus. Uh, Josh told me if you become uh, your inner cat boy, then it's actually quite easy to remember because one of them is just like Nial, you know, like Nia. Um, that's actually a good tip for anyone at home uh, that has issues separating the two. Or just don't say that at all. I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just messing. Uh, and here we go into what possibly could be the death of Nile in Castle Soul. Yeah, but CBD, I mean, he is about Ooh. to go to Albus here and get that second half, being able to uh, to completely block that column. Uh, Pup riding around here in Kata. There's actually a couple of things you can do here. Other than the Watchdog Duo, there's also still the Sacred, uh, not the Sacred, but the Physic Flask here, as I said on the board as well, which is another one of those early game squares so you can potentially get. Very nice wild strikes here coming from Catalyst, by the way, on that uh, Nile fight. Grabbing that. Yeah, he actually ended six. up going for that. Very, very nice combo. Um, yeah, uh, this is going to be 8-8 eight to eight right now in just a moment as CBD is going to... Uh, pop the pot and then kill Albus in one shot. And there we go. Full wow. Halix Tree Medallion. Nice block on column five. That is now a tied game. Yeah, and Aggie is working. This is exactly what they needed to do. I'm very glad to see this. Aggie is taking all of these early game squares away. Kateri is on eight and doesn't really have many or if actually any other than maybe C1, I think. That's like their only bingo threat, I think. And if you can deny that and you have stuff like Moog up, CBD is just going to get it. Despite the fact that Kata is actually getting some levels now and he's leveling up his wild strikes weapon a little bit, it's not bad, but you won't be able to compete with the rotten plus 10 stuff. Yeah, let me go ahead and move over here to Team Red, by the way. Adjust your eyes, viewers. Adjust your eyes. We're shifting over to the other team real quick here as Pup is going to be doing the double watchdog fight in the catacomb uh, as everybody else is currently traversing uh, and getting to their next squares. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know if Eggy knows the skip here. There's actually kind of a nice skip you can do at the back end of uh, this castle where you jump down a tree to reach Leonine a little bit earlier. Probably won't need it though. I see he's kind of uncontested on it right now. And here we go. This is going to be... This is such a tight match now. This one from... Holy sleeping golem yeah. to a uh, holy tie. Uh, and this, I believe, is going to be... This is exactly the match I was hoping for, to be honest. When we're talking about one of the most anticipated matches of today, this was mine, and this is exactly, they're delivering uh, what I wanted. I ordered this on Amazon last night, and it showed up next day. 
fresh prime. Yeah, it showed up real, real big. And honestly, uh, we talked about it briefly when it happened, making that call early on, realizing we're losing all of these early squares. CBD says, I'm going to Helic Tree. I'm even picking up the plus 10. Like I'm going all late game. And currently that's working so well for them. Speaking of Prime Chat, no, nah, I'm just messing. Um, anyways, moving wrong. into what could be more Lord of Blood here for Kata, uh, as he's actually going to be going past this invader. This is going to be... Ah, dude, this, is, this whole board's crazy. Yeah, no, this is definitely a, a prime opportunity to check your Prime. <laughs> in a prime time match like this, I definitely have to agree. Uh, Eggy is on the way now to Leonine and Misbegotten. Is probably, even though his weapon isn't super leveled up, I think he picked up those uh, smithing fives. So it's maybe like plus 15 or something along those lines. Still going to essentially two, three shot it. Uh, and CBD is going towards capital. He actually, he, he is getting capital access off of Melania and Melania and Godric, which is quite a rare combo. Yep. And uh, Pup here watching two cats fight in a catacomb. I don't know if that's illegal or not, but there it is. Two watchdogs down. Uh, she only needs one more now going probably straight for the Limgrave one. Yeah, yeah. That's an important square to sneak in, though. That's nice that she's going to be able to get that. Nice. There's Leonidas Misbegotten now for Aggie. Going to be claiming that square. This is all of the bingos now are blocked from Team Monkey Balls. This went from possibly triple threat on the board to no threats at all. Um, yeah, there's no more bingos. It's just going to... Oh, well, actually, I guess... C column four. Yeah. Four, yeah. But I mean, like, but for, I mean, for Team Cattery. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and Pub is about to block that, too. So this is just going to come down to a straight-up, like, lockout, essentially. Oh, she went to the, the wrong cave. Yeah, I has to go over to the uh, catacomb behind the Church of LA. This is... This is... One hell of a match, for sure. DTS fight here on CBD, currently trying to get capital access, uh, or working towards it anyways. Last watchdog going to be coming out from Puppery here in just a moment as she's making her way to the catacombs. Mogwin, Dynasty Palace here on uh, Cata screen as he's going to go yeah, for Yeah, wait Mogwin. a second. That's actually a really interesting play, and I'm not going to lie, his setup for it is not that bad. Wild Strikes rolled smoke, especially with like a bleed weapon. You can get pretty close, even skipping his like second phase. Yeah. During the staggers, you can do so much damage with that Ash of War. And that's the sort of play that Team Kateri is going to need, taking away one of those late game squares that the Monkey Ballers are so well set up for. And it's also going to get him very much on the board. Like He's probably going to have enough health to work on all of these other uh, remaining squares. Imbued sword keys, something that's completely left behind. It's something that you can pretty easily do without any weapon setup. You just gotta, I mean, you, got, you have to kill Red Wolf, but that's pretty much it. They also have that advantage on the Shabiri Grapes, uh, which is something that uh, might come into play here. Like, in fact, if Kata gets the smoke square, they're about to get the watchdog square. Uh, Suddenly, they can get pretty oh. close by just doing like grapes plus one and another one. A little bit of feels lag, man, for just a moment. Thankfully, for just a moment this time. Um, yeah, this is this is interesting. Eggy is probably working on that 10 Physic Flask tier square here, going to the third Church of America where he's going to pick up the Physic and then one plus two more tiers on the tree. Once again, the strategy remains the same. Eggy working on those early game squares, just getting them away from Team Kateri and CBD just killing everything that's over 10,000 HP, essentially. Very quick uh, watchdog kill here from Pup as she gets Getting that stagger. Down. Yep, there we go. And that is going to be the last well block of bingo this match, as it is now 9-9 nine to nine tied for both teams. No more bingos left. Full majority. Who gets the 13 points? Okay, so Eggy working on this square will actually be very important. Um, Kata only setting up Moog and pivoting to the imbued sword keys is kind of big brain. Because I was just kind of doing the math and like how many squares do they really need here? Eggy is about to take away the Physic Flask. Kata has advantage on Moog now. And he's working on the Imbued Sword Keys, which I believe he automatically has uh, an advantage on right now by just being in the Academy. I don't think I've seen any other player in, in, in the Academy in the first place. So I think he's going to be the furthest ahead in that regard. That would, say, would give them the 10th square. They have the advantage on the Grapes, which is 11. He has the advantage on Moog, which is 12. The only problem is... 
Fias, Moog, Remaining, which CBD obviously has the adventure, Moog is in the capital right now, Aggie is working on those physics tiers. This is going to be extremely close. Yep. Um, this is probably going to come down to the last square, just from like the looks of it. Yep. No, I, I definitely agree. This is going to be extremely close. Four squares is all that they need, though, to claim the victory. Gold Free and Moog Sewers is currently in CBD's pocket, though. That's already two. Physic Flask tiers from Aggie, that is three. They, If they get all those three squares, they will have control over the board, and then becomes uh, a guessing game for Team Cattery on which is the fourth square. This is yeah, going to be very, but, but very interesting. Actually, I, I think this is going to come down to Fia's champs, and it's a really good call that that's what Papari is working on right now. I don't think anyone has any progress in that regard, because CBD is getting gold free and Moog sewers here, right? Aggie is getting the 10 Physic Flasks. Kata potentially will get imbued Sword Keys and Moog, depending on how the fight will go for him, because he has that advantage. Yeah. It's going to be 12 to 12, and it's going to probably come down to Fia's champs, and it's a really good call to send Papari there right now. Aggie should probably go there next. I guess we'll see. I'm, I'm really, really not sure. Really, really not sure. Okay, listen, listen, listen. This might be listen the it. super rare play of Fia's gems after Moog Sewers. I well, you have I've to kill Morgoth for that, though. That's the thing. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, the seal doesn't go away. I right. wonder if this is something um, that they could potentially do. Possibly, possibly. I mean, like, like we time, said, CBD like like is online. So if CBD is like, yo, I got gold free. Let me get Morgoth real quick so I can get the Fias champs through Moog sewers. Honestly, would not be the worst idea at this point. Yeah, because I don't think Eggy can reliably, with his current setup, like, look at his HP, but, like, is he really going to go through Radan and Gargoyles? I feel like at that point, CBD is already there after the Moog kill. He's just going to, like, three-tap Morgoth. Right. And what's really nice, honestly, even uh, for CBD in this case, is that his weapon is actually really good versus NPCs. The Golden or Urchery Slam, you can just sit on them and call it a day. True, true. Yeah, I will say, okay, so Pup didn't put Wild Strikes on, I believe at least, onto that weapon, which is also pretty okay against NPCs. You can kind of just like stagger them along. But yeah, I would definitely give the advantage in any sort of way to CBD there. And this is only, by the way, this it only comes down to that if Kata gets Moog, um, which I think he has a good chance to do. Oh, wow, this is gonna be super interesting. I didn't, I didn't at all. Like once it was like it was like I think six one or something at one point. It did not look like a match like this. I'm gonna move over to the four player screen here real quick, chat. So adjust your eyes one more time as we're gonna be moving over to another overlay. Here we are moving in to see all the fights happening at the same time. Here we are, Radon versus Goldfree. There it is, square marked Aggie for the Physic Flask tiers. Currently 10 to 9 now in the lead for Monkey Ballers by one. What does Aggie even do now? I mean, I guess he doesn't know that they have an advantage on Shabriri Grapes. Yeah. And potentially on imbued keys. Like, he doesn't have that intel, so he might be going for that. And I do honestly think, like, he doesn't... He, I don't know what he can do. I think it's really down to CBD, kind of like most of the match, to be fair. Uh, he didn't end up killing more gods yet, so maybe the play is going to be to um, send Eggy to Fierce Champs. It's something they can obviously do later on. Like, he could just go to Moog right now um, and then realize that that's maybe a potential play. Yeah, looks like CBD yelling at Melina as she's currently yapping his ear off while that's he's like, trying to get like... the sewers. But yeah, I, this is this is a uh, yeah, tough call. for grapes, I think. Yeah, he's kind of going that way. Yeah, he's definitely going for grapes, hundred percent. No, you're right. Which honestly Which... is a great call. Yeah, the, the question is like, um, Team Kettery has two of them, and uh, at what point will they say, okay, we should probably secure the square right now? Because I'm pretty sure Pub has already killed Edgar, um, which I believe. So I, I know you have to come here to even spawn Hayata in, in, in the first place. And then you can technically also... I mean, he does have some graces in in the castle Morn. Like, I don't know at, at which point it becomes faster to actually go back there instead of killing Edgar and Leonia, which Papa's already done. So at one point, they should probably make the call, oh, we should finish the square now. I don't know at what point that will happen. Maybe Eggy can uh, sneak it away. Uh, you know, possibly after Radon maybe grabbing that? Because, like, wh what would you yeah, pick? You yeah. know, Fierce Champs or Grapes? I I'd definitely be Grapes. 
So I, I'm yeah, I mean, they need to, to do thing, both. You know? Oh, oh, they need to. Do... Yeah. Here's the pivot. Okay, yeah, I think she's going to Fia's. I think she's going to Fia's here. Not going for grapes, even though she has two of them already. Oh yeah, she is. Interesting. Like maybe. I mean, I don't know what their communication is like right now because they have to be aware of the fact that CBD just killed Goldfree, right? They know he's in the capital. They know he has advantage on Moke, which is going to get them to 12. So they know they need one more square to win. Um, but maybe that's also the problem to... here, to be honest. Maybe that's the problem. They're so focused on what CBD is doing that they forget that Aggie is also, you know, right. still in the game and still right. able to make choices. They're like, oh, he just got Goldfree. He's going to go for Moke Stewards. He's going to go from Fias. That means we have to stop Fias. That is the next best thing. But in reality, there's also Aggie still. He's still, he's still collecting. He just got Physic Tears. But, 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 what is he going to do next? Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not sure. Is he going to Hayeta through Godric? Is that going to be faster at this point than riding the other way? Or is he trying to get... No, what else would he be doing here? I guess he's trying to... Oh, he needs the Grape. Yeah, he's, go he's going to kill Godric to not get the Grape. Can you not get the Grape from the other... From, like, Thops? Yes. Is that not possible? Yeah, you can. I guess it's just, like, the travel oh, okay, time. Okay. Do you do the fight or do you travel? You know, it's kind of like a toss-up, I guess. Yeah, I guess he's strong enough. And then Hayata is right there, too. Yeah. I guess it depends on, like, his damage output. See how much his damage is. His damage is pretty all right. It's fine, yeah. It's definitely fine. I am, I am really surprised. Um... I would love. I mean, I'm, we're gonna ask them after the match how the communication is going yeah. on right now because, because Kata is about to finish off the imbued square here relatively shortly, and he's going to pivot. He just finished it, and he's going to pivot back to Moog right now. So, um, <laughs> like, yeah, this is literally. It is gonna come down to this. Okay, so I think what's happening is here is they were aware that this is gonna come down to the Fias champion square, but they might be too comfortable with their lead in Shabriri Graves, like you said. Ignoring the fact yep. that they can actually sneak it away from them. Or they just decide to play it even more risky. They're going to like kill Gargs and then pivot back to the Grapes. It's going to be so close. And then, like I said, I think their best bet... Like um, At this point, they must be comfortable with um, having CBD go to Fierce Champions through Moog. Because Eggy's not even working on it. Like He's just on the Grapes right now. If it comes down to that square, it's going to be through that. Nice little uh, elevator skip here from CBD, by the way. Very, very nice. Very Moog nice. fight here on Kata's screen now. See that Wild Strikes possibly go into action here. The damage is not super great. I wonder yeah, like, I what the upgrade the... is. Is it plus 12? Is it? I think it's probably... Uh, he definitely went into the cave with Falling Star Beast, so it's at least 15, maybe 16, something along those lines. The Wild Strikes is still going to do a lot of work. Moog, despite being a lot of blood, bleeds a lot, so you can definitely get some work done there. Oh, and there it is, by the way. Uh, Pop going for the last grape, actually. So that is 11 oh, to 11 that's now. that's massive. That's massive. Okay, okay. This is literally going to come down to the Moog play. Like, Mo like Fierce Champs through Moog. Because CBD hasn't done Redan, he hasn't done Gargoyles, he hasn't done Mimic here. That's going to be his best option to reach that. Okay, this is definitely getting interesting. Getting very, very interesting here. Wild Strikes currently on Moke. I'm going to move this one more time to the four-player screen. Adjust your eyes, Chatters. Adjust your eyes. And here we go. We're moving into a bunch of fights here. Double Moog, technically. Am I hallucinating? Moog Sewers and Moog, the actual guy. Yeah, I'm honestly kind of surprised. I mean... I keep forgetting that this version of Moog is actually a tank. I think he has like 14,000 HP or something crazy like that. I was kind of surprised how low the damage was. He's also like immune to all status effects, I believe. Uh, I think there's some lore reason why people are saying it's just like an illusion or something like that. So the rod doesn't do anything here for CBD. At least some base damage just of the plus 10 uh, bonk weapon. But yeah, I mean, Kata is definitely... I mean, the Wild Strikes is coming in right here. 600, 900 damage. Not too shabby. Moog Sewers should be down here in just a moment for CBD. That's going to be another square, so it's going to be 12 to 11. However, Pup is going to uh, kill her Mimic in just a moment here and then make her way towards Gargs. So this is definitely a, a full-on race CBD to Fias, just as he's called has, it. Yeah, he has the advantage, and I don't know, are they aware of this play? You have to do this, like, stupid parkour. Like, I don't know how comfortable he is. I mean, he is uh, going towards that. I think he just got rid of the illusory wall. Okay, he knows. I think there's no way he would have opened that any other way. Wait, he might have actually already killed Morgoth, um, which I missed, actually, because there was an edge screen on my <laughs> on my end. But I guess he already... No, 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 he, no, just no. he just realizes it. That's where the seed is. He knows now he has to kill Morgoth to actually make that play happen, just like you said. 
And he didn't, did he not pick up any graces up there? I don't think he did. No, he had Avenue Balcony. His Avenue Balcony. Oh, okay, okay, okay. At least that. That's something. But he has to run all the way back up the branch. He didn't grab the grace from Gold Freeze. He's yeah, all he could have picked up the West up. Rampart. But I do think that's still worth the time in this case. No, he, he is going to have... I mean, it's literally going to come down to the stupid parkour, I believe. Because he's literally going to three, four shots. And obviously, oh god. I mean, looking at Pup's HP bar versus Gargoyles, I also feel a little bit uncomfortable myself. That's yeah, not, not something sure I would that's enjoy go. doing. Kata right now in phase two of Moog, by the way. Really, really close to getting this fight completed for his team. This is what's current. It's going to turn into a 12 12 tie here in just a moment, unless he has an incident. But it looks like yeah, he, he is being in sent here to Moog makes the most sense. He has absolutely no chance to even get anywhere close to Fierce Champion, so he just leaves it to CBD. I mean, there's some world in which Kata dies at the very end here, but he's playing so clean and comfortab comfortably that it seems unlikely. He is getting out of potions, though. Plus one physic, by the way, uh, showing a uh, very, very good skill here on this fight. This is insanely close. Bleed build up here, though, on Kata. He's got to be careful. Got to make the right dodges the here. Especially with the staggers. Like, it can be really bad, really quick if you get staggered by that blood flame into a bleed stagger. Wild Strikes coming out one more time. Sadly, not enough to get the final hit on Moog. Moog is going to be flying around trying to delay as much as he can. However, this should be it for Kata. There is a stagger. There is the R1. That is Moog on the board now for Team Kateri. It is 12-12, to 12, currently tied up. And uh -oh. now CBD making his way over the branch into the gold free arena going to be killing Morgoth into back into moog sewers and hopefully yeah. having enough time before pup can kill valen gargoyles this is going to be pup versus cbd at this point now it is important to say that it feels like we've seen that play with moog a little bit earlier that not not picking up the grace actually is costing cbd so much time yeah that entire run back just now was like two minutes of just like more he could have already i mean he could have grabbed this grace i guess had he seen this play earlier so uh from this point um the race is on now. Obviously, I would not want to be in Pub's shoes at this point. I hate this fight, and I know a lot of other people do. The second that second gargoyle spawns, the one that you've already been working on suddenly flies away, spams poison. She's at least doing decent damage here. She does have that Ach. strike weapon again. Ach, and this is not the greatest. I, this, I feel like this is like a plus six great stars. That damage is not as much Honestly, as I expected you for a strike that, weapon. But it's probably like plus 16, and it's just gargoyles. I don't know. I feel I, For a strike weapon, this should do way more. If it was a sword, I would understand that. If it's a strike weapon, I'm expecting at least, you know, Yeah, maybe it's like plus 12 or something. Or maybe it is really plus 9. I don't know. Okay, so more goats coming in as... Like, I feel like if Pup gets Gargoyle's first try and Fierce Champ's first try, she's in the lead. Because despite the fact that CBD has the Gargoyle skip, basically, by having killed Moog, he um, still needs to do that entire parkour section, and that's not very nice. Um, if Pub dies, I think that's when CBD becomes uh, is, is in the lead. Yep, CBD currently on the Morgoth fight. He should get the rain attack here in just a moment. There it is. Does he get a stagger, though? Doesn't get the stagger. It just rolls out real quick to make sure that he doesn't get tagged by that move. That is a very devastating attack. Uh, Pup here on Valen Gargoyles. Going to be dealing now with two at the same time. Has to be really careful here. She did level her health bar at least a little bit just to make it a little bit easier yeah, on herself. But important. here's the poison mist coming out of the twin blade one. And now poison mist out of the uh, sword one. They're both just misting up the place trying to make sure that Classic they can gargoyle. hotbox her out of the arena. But it uh, looks like Pup does have control over this fight. Yeah, she's doing really well. And if she can clear up that first gargoyle, this fight becomes so much easier. Like, it's not amazing, but it becomes so much better if you don't have to deal with the constant poison spam, which the other gargoyle is currently doing, is able to run out of it in time, so at least doesn't get that heavy poison buildup on her. Oh, she really needs to get rid of that first one. That's More really got down, by problem. the way, for CBD. Huge. Okay, this is, this oh, is turning... She this can't is... leave. This is turning into CBD's now. fight here now. As he has this down, he's going to be able to jump past the seal and go past into Fiesta Champs. This is actually turning into CBD's favor. This fight is going longer than we expected for Pup. I'm not going to lie, though. I'm really scared. How well does he know this parkour? Like, it's not easy. Like, I know if you do maybe some speedruns, there's some decent movement for it that you can be aware of. But it doesn't matter if you have a plus 10 or a huge health bar. You will die to fall damage. Elden Ring's hardest boss, Gravity. Hold on a second. We have Melina yapping one more time, trying to give us a bit more lore. Oh god, Pup cannot get rid of that one gargoyle. It's so annoying and so relatable. 
Yep, that poison mist just not doing yeah, any oh work. My God. She tries to close for R one, the immediate backup. <laughs> this is definitely brutal. Again, adjust your eyes, Chad. Adjust your eyes. There's only one more square on the board, so I'm gonna get rid of the bingo board for now. We're gonna move into the four player perspective. As feels champs is the last goal, so we're gonna move over into the big screen. Try and make sure that we get every action as much as we can. And here goes CBD. Dropping down stone by stone. If he reaches the bottom of this, he can open a secret path to the deep root depths. And as soon as he opens the door, oh no, Pop just got poisoned. She only has, um, I think she can. I don't know if she can win this. She has a raw meat dumpling. Raw meat dumpling might save her here. She does only have one more gargoyle left though. So she should be able to get some staggers out, use those iframes to get rid of uh, some of the tick damage from poison. One more jump here for CBD, does get it. And there it is, CBD down, oh, ground no, zero. Oh. Oh, she got tagged by the twin blade attack right then as the poison was ticking down. And I think now CBD is definitely in the lead. He's managed to do the parkour correctly. He's going to hit the illusory wall. He's about to enter deep with them to successfully, successfully basically skipping gargoyles and he can reach for his gems now. Yeah, this is definitely looking like it is a win for Monkey Ballers as he's making his way across the branches here as Pup sadly has to redo the gargoyle fight and that might actually cost him the match. That's that's crazy. I mean, this entire match is just like a fever dream. This time, I feel like Zoo, the last match, yeah. where I, I basically almost logged out of it after it was like 6-1, and then CBD goes for that massive play, the plus 10 rotten staff, just like steps up huge time. He still has to parkour down these roots right here. Obviously, he cannot know at all how well Team Kettery is doing on this square right now. This is what I'm talking about. This is This is literally from the beginning of the match. Uh, of mentioning that if CBD is allowed to just prep and get that plus 10 weapon and everybody else doesn't do it, it's paid off. Yet again, just like last week, it's paying off for him to have so much uh, damage on his side just to be able to start just firing off all of these other squares just to uh, get his team ahead. Yeah. Huge payout. Yeah, very much so. I mean, at this point, Kat has actually made pretty good progress towards this fight. He might even reach Gargoyles relatively soon. Because we do have to mention, I mean, like you said, CBD is actually set up for this very nicely. He actually, which is a rare CBD moment, has health. Normally, when I watch that guy's stream, he's on like six vigor. But this time, he has the health bar all the way leveled up. He can even level it up higher. He has that Earth tree plus 10 slam. I don't really see a world where he gets bullied by Fierce Champs here. I mean, what are you going to do when you, uh, you know, kill Millennia for 500,000 runes? I feel like at that point, you yeah, don't have yeah, any yeah. excuse to not level health. You know what I mean? Exactly. That, that, He's already that'd be all crazy. stacked up. And I mean, it definitely worked in his favor here, especially for fights like this, um, where you will just take some damage, especially if you want to play aggressive and get these NPCs down. And I mean, he's about to end the fight. This is actually working out. Nice little hop here on Torrent. A little bit of Peepo Torrent as he gets this gray. It's going to be ready for Fias Champs. Is he going to use the Ash of War is the question. I would use the Ash of War here because it is going to put in a lot yeah, of work. Yeah. It's a plus 10, and the NPCs don't really react to it. He's got a big enough health bar to tank some hits. This should be in the bag for CBD. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Uh, traditionally, the two culprits in this fight are Rod Rogier and then also uh, Lionel. Yeah. Um, the rest is kind of acceptable. I definitely agree, definitely agree. Aggie here currently in his Radon era. Uh, going to be having this fight here very, very soon. Alexander smacking his head against Leonard. This is getting insanely close. And here it is. Oh, look at that damage on Fia's champs. Jeez. Very, very nice. Three little bonks should do it. There it is. First, Fia's champ is down. Second one should spawn here soon. Gargoyle still on pup screen. Looks like she died again as this is currently still yeah. only the first Gargoyle. This is looking like it is a victory for Team Monkey Ballers. Wow, Roger getting kind of bullied. Two charged at two is almost taking on his entire health bar. He can get a little bit annoying as soon as he buffs his weapon and spams glint blades. He can kind of roll catch you, but no chance at all. If we get, get if we can get Lionel down right here, I think CBD has this in the back. And for all the people that were saying six to one, it is over. How do you feel now? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't have guessed it in my wildest streams. Does take a little bit of damage here from the double X wheel. That this guy does an absurd amount of damage out of nowhere sometimes. It has to be something you have to, uh, you have to look out for that a little bit. 
But I mean, CBD is putting out so much damage here. Yeah, this is uh, looking like it is Jover, as the yeah, kids say nowadays. So. Not trying to compensate a curse too much, but CBD is really just set up for this. Yep. And this the is Lionel, by the way, who's the tankiest of the three, and he's taking an insane amount of damage here, just going for those nice running R1s. There it is, Lionel, only one more hit away. He should be able to have one shot, uh, good old pumpkin head man as well, in just a moment here. Yeah, I really like the patience here as well. Like, people underestimate how much damage they can put off. Yes, yep. CBD is really strong, but he's still playing it patiently. He just needs to get rid of these two. And then the last guy is actually extremely squishy. He might die to, like, a single charge. Yeah, that's the damage he can put out. Oh, and here it is, almost on the board, about to mark it. Oh, oh he's getting he carried slice. sliced. Look at that damage. That's actually kind of crazy. No butt slam, sadly, from CBD. Wait, oh, he digs on the branch! <laughs> He dinked on the branch. Karen's Running laser R1. guy does not mess around. Bro. Running R1 what yet again. He doing? <laughs> he's, the, he's the final boss for real. Yo, it is John Elden Lord just hanging out with Fia's champs. <laughs> no, like, actually. Rolling, carrying, slicing. This guy is stolen. God, I don't even want to imagine the nerves because obviously they don't know how far... The other team is, but CBD gets the kill, wins, pops out, very deserved. And there very it deserved. is, 13 to 12 for Team Monkey Ballers after an hour and 16 minutes. I cannot believe it. That is wow. one hell of a comeback. Actually absurd. Actually absurd. What a match. What an absolute match, dude. Yeah. That could be finals yeah, right there, bro. I, if this was finals, <laughs> I'd be happy. I'm not going to lie. That was insane. Insanely well deserved pop of CBD making that clutch call to pick up even the plus 10. Like the second I saw him picking up that plus 10, I was like, okay, wait, that's not usually what people do. He is like looking at Melania and stuff, and he definitely was, and he made it work. Yeah. I'm going to let the players just simmer for a quick, quick moment as that was one hell of a match. I'm not going to uh, call them into the uh, interview room just yet, give them a little bit of time. Boy. Uh, I don't, I don't know what to say that from the sleeping golem incident into Kateri having a six to one lead into a 13 to 12 win for monkey ballers. We, we saw it all. We saw it all in one match. Everything that can happen yeah. for bingo happened in one match. Pretty much. What a roller coaster. Yeah. I mean, literally last square, it came down to the last square, the super rare Moog Suas into Fia's champs played after the insane comeback to make that even possible in the first place. Like, what a rare match. And I mean, Kateri also playing insanely well, getting those early squares clutched on the board and, uh, yeah, not able to capitalize on that last square. I mean, I wouldn't want to be like I. I wouldn't have been even close to beating Gargos in spot. Pub was at like, I. I just despise that fight. Yeah. And uh, and I mean, I, CBD didn't even have to with his unique uh, approach to it. All right, we're gonna be moving over to the post screen here, guys. Let's get ready. Players look like they are ready to be interviewed, so we're gonna go into a quick post match. Uh, again, hey, we're back on screen, Lynn. We're back on screen. There's so much happening for an hour, 15 minutes. They, I hope they didn't forget what we look like. Uh, we are back yeah. here. Uh, let me go ahead and bring in all the players. Uh, and here we go. <laughs> GGs, guys. GGs, the team Monkey Ballers. Holy oh, freaking guacamole! One hell of a match. There's a lot to talk about. A lot to break Wowie. down. Uh, wow. A lot, a lot happening, a lot happening. Okay, so first, let's just uh, get things out of the way. Sleeping Golem, what the hell was that? All right. Dude, oh okay, let's God. talk with uh, both Team Catter and Team Monkey Ballers had an incident with Sleeping Golem back to back to back to back. <laughs> uh, what was the thought process of that happening, and what was your move beyond that? Like, were you just too time committed uh, to not do it and do something else? Like, what was the thought process? Uh, first, uh, Aggie, go ahead. Yeah, so um, obviously that was the most frustrating thing of all time. I'm just full tilt at me for the rest of the night. <laughs> uh, he literally had one like, critical left, and he was in the middle of the arena and just sank into the ground. And I couldn't mm. finish him because of that. <laughs> so, like, uh, yeah, and then, and then incidents happened, like, I think three more times after that. Um, I, I was saying that, like, the, t the attempt I was on when Pup clicked the square, I, if, whether I got it or not, I was just going to leave because it was just taking too much time. And um, yeah, yeah we, we wanted to get Somber Bellbearing early. 
to set up for the later game. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, then I got sniped on that as well because I got a ridiculous snipe from across the cave on a, on one of the bugs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that was just a double whammy of extremely frustrating stuff. And then at that point, yeah, like obviously I'm way behind and I just needed to find ways to contribute. So I went for stuff that was unlikely to be contested that got us important blocks while CBD just went for the big combo play. All right. Now, what about you, Pup? What was the thought process going through, you know, a sleeping golem incident into like going for like the other early game stuff? Uh, what was the team communication like and everything? Yeah, uh, I mean, kind of just uh, the time sink was there mm -hmm. and it was kind of like feeling that a lot of the other early game stuff, the other I thought was Lightning Ram. And by that time, if I, um, if the other team raced that first, like I would have lost it anyway. And uh, kind of thinking that maybe the other person also has an incident. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, not sure. Gotcha. Yeah. Was, and there was one square that we were kind of surprised by, by how long you guys held on to that. And that was Shibiri Grapes. Uh, was there a lot of communication about like holding on to that as long as possible uh, for the late game to try and, and you know milk as much time out of that as you can, or was it just something that maybe you just set up and forgot in passing because there are other squares that were more important? What was the uh, yeah work around on that? That's basically it. Um, I mean, I knew that uh, CBD was the one who killed Godric, and he was also the one killing freaking everything else on the board. So yeah. I was like, he's probably not doing Shabriri grapes. Uh, so it's gonna have to be Aggie, and then Aggie has to run, you know, all the way to, uh, uh, he has to run all the way to the start of Liurnia, or he has to, like, kill Godric to get there. Uh, he obviously did three spirits, so I assume he had Stoneville access, but I'm not sure how he was going about it. And then when he got Leonine, it was like, okay, it is time to, you know, get Radan, start mm -hmm. heading underground, and then finish the grapes. That was kind of the info that gave it away. Yeah. yeah. I think I know. I've, I remember you mentioning that sometimes you have issues knowing when to hold onto squares. But in retrospect, if that one was actually basically the perfect timing, like you set yourself up into that situation where it was basically a race between pub killing gargoyles and then CBD with the extremely rare sewer moog into Fierce Champs play, which is like pretty cool to see. Uh, one question for CBD from my end is: At what point? Because there must have been this point because I saw you grab the somber. Pen, which is like something that not a lot of people ever do. So there must have been one point where you're like, nah, I'd win. And going for like late game squares only or something. Always Sumber 10. Always do it. Unless there's a, a, unless there's a nine on the board. Always go for Sumber 10. Okay, I, I respect I it. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah obviously, tricky. I would say, you know, uh, the MVP of this match here, CBD. What was... I, I said this last week, and I'll say it again this week. You being allowed to prep... It is it is a big problem for the other team because this happened last week as well where you were allowed to prep for a match and then you just started killing everything on the board. It happened again today, and that really, really paid off. Um, what was the overall thought process after getting that Somber 10 online? Was it just go on a killing spree, or was there uh, more depth to that besides just uh, getting presence on the board and starting to like block everything? Uh, I think, so after getting the Somber 10, I, I knew I had to kill something. So mm -hmm. Borealis was there. I didn't have a lot of health, but I knew that was the, the easiest or the fastest, like, like big boss kill, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it fed into Dragon Hearts. So I, I just went straight for that. I, I knew that, uh, m the Millennia score was huge just because it was a God boss and it's room level 60. Uh, so I, I, I pretty much had to make a play and be like, I, I either, either, I don't know, just not get hit to Millennia too much, <laughs> or uh, or I just have to give up the Millennia Square, and, and it, I, I went for it, and um, I think that I think that probably was like the biggest turning point, I guess, just going for it so early and not dying. Um, and then partially, down, yeah. Down after that, yeah. Yeah, partially, yeah. So that that Millennia was at least the turning point for Monkey Ballers for sure, Tar starting to take that board back uh and, and presence however i would say the biggest turning point was the halley tree medallion square blocking that okay. uh yeah. blocking that column five and taking that away from cattery uh really put a lot of pressure on them because uh Kata was on the same uh progress as you uh but obviously with a somber 10 weapon uh, i think believe yeah. uh compared to a plus 15 great stars uh um, correct 
Yeah, was just obviously the difference maker in that fight. And so you're able to take that fight really quickly and get to Albus to really, you know, snipe that square and take away the one of the biggest, you know, bingo lines for them. Uh, so I think that so, was the biggest uh, change. I want to, I just want to quickly ask, like, I'm very curious. So first of all, CBD, dude, amazing game. Like, you played like a god this game. So amazing. Um, I, I, I have, I have two. Millennia, yeah, like, I'm not surprised, dude. So I have two questions. Number one is which freaking weapon did you use? I use Rotten Staff, man. <laughs> Where'd you find that? Old Altus? Was, yeah, Old Altus. Oh my god, dude. I, I, because I got the somber bell bearings, I went yeah. on a search spree for a somber weapon because I wanted to quickly set it up as well, and I couldn't find anything. I feel like I searched the furthest that I've ever searched for a weapon, and yeah. I couldn't find a no, single somber too. one. It was I, crazy. I, 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 went, I went to Kale, I went to Beach Merchant. I never do that, right? And I, I just... I yeah, just yeah, same, same. Yeah. Oh my god. And um, second, uh, what class and uh, gift did you start with? I started with uh, runes, the, the lines between rune, and um, uh, I started with raptor claws, whatever that class was. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 same yeah. Class, started the same class. Yeah, yeah, same. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so did you have bewitching branches for Alex G. Medallion? Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I, I got it before I went to Millennia. I think. Ooh, that's, yeah. that's, that's smart. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I was thinking that when I get gold bosses and I mark it. Yeah. I would have the advantage of having the branches already because mm, I bought them. That's exactly what I said. Yeah, I thought yeah, you did and so, perfectly too. Yeah, okay, and then this is the weapon diff. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Okay, good job, CBD. Honestly, that was really good. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys, for playing. Sadly, I have to cut the post interview just a little bit short as that oh, yeah. match went longer long than match. I expected. <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you so much for everyone for playing. It was a fantastic match to watch. If you guys have the time to rewatch it, please do. Uh, there is a lot of like information I think that you guys as players would find very useful as well uh, going into the next week's match and in even tomorrow's match. So uh, thank you again uh, for everyone for playing and best of luck tomorrow to your uh, match tomorrow. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. GG's. GG's. GG's.